Hello, 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 everybody, and welcome to another week. A new week, a new me, no more green hair. Exciting stuff. We are winding down for seniors. This is your last week. Woo! For everybody else, you got a couple more to go after this, but not many more. Let's get to it. I have a new incentive for you, friends. Not a whole lot of you are coming to my lectures, and I think that's going to be uh, more helpful to you as we get into the last couple of topics here, because there will be more information for me to talk about. So, uh, after our short lecture question and answer session for each of our classes, I'll be holding a short Mr. M versus Students challenge on a platform of your choice. So you can come and get crushed in chess, or Go, or Overwatch, or Magic the Gathering on Arena. So any of those are appealing to you and you'd like to lose, then uh, please join us. But also, please come to those sessions anyway, if you're able to. Uh, they are voluntary, but they can be very helpful. All right, and now with further ado, let's get into objects. This is the topic for this week. Now. As a caveat, if you are a senior, I am not going to require the last assignment that's due at the end of this week from you. So make sure you've finished your create task, your explore task, I have them both, and you're done. Uh, that's not to say that you shouldn't learn about this topic. It's a good, uh, interesting, and helpful thing to know about computer programming, but I'm not requiring it. Uh, further, before we go on, about the create task, uh, I will be grading both your create and explore tasks. I will give you feedback and I'll give you a grade for it. My grade might not be exact to the AP graders. Um, we might differ in some points, but I will. I guarantee it'll be pretty close. Uh, the grade will be just that. It's only a grade. It's not weighed any heavier or lighter than anything else. I know this quarter is a little weird with the pass fail going on. So if you maybe don't do as well on the create task, you don't need to freak out. You're not going to fail the quarter just because of this one assignment. Just work hard, do everything else, and you should be okay. All right. Uh, if you do well on it, awesome. Um, you probably did well on it uh, for the AP exam as well. All right. That's all I'm going to say about that. Let's talk about objects. We're going to define what an object is in terms of computer science, and you're going to use objects to create achieve higher program complexity, which is going to be great. Let's talk about it. What is an object? So there is this whole philosophy around this thing called objects. It's called object-oriented programming. And it's this idea that we can use these entities called objects, ooh, mystical, to somehow make our programming easier, more accessible, uh, more friendly to larger programming environments where we might have lots of departments working together and we might want to obfuscate some of our code so everyone can't see it, but also we want to make it accessible so they can still use it. So object-oriented uh, design tries to address all of those issues. Objects have properties and can be related to each other as well as contain one another. So these are kind of interesting ideas that we might not quite get to in this class, but are uh, kind of on the periphery that you might want to think about. So what's a property that an object might have and what is an object? Anything could be an object. Woo, that's a non-answer, right? So an object is going to be some sort of thing, entity, that you want to keep track of that's going to have more than one fact associated with it. So let's take a look at this object right here. This is an apple, right? So its uh, type might be apple or fruit. Its color is red. Its shape is round. Its weight is a pound. It's a pound apple. Nice. Uh, it's edible. It's uh, iterating this as ripe and so on and so forth. They have, might have hundreds of other properties, right? And I might have more than one fruit. So I might want to keep track of all of my fruits using this object Think of it like a container, almost. It's kind of like a variable, but a variable that stores more than one piece of information, all associated with one thing. So it's really useful for, let's say, storing contact information, because your contact information might have a name, might have a picture associated with it, and it might have an email address. All of those things can go into one place, which is very convenient, right? 
What's the advantage? Uh, you're abstracting data to allow for a reduction of program complexity. So think about how you would store this stuff if you didn't have access to objects. You would have to have multiple variables or multiple lists of variables all coordinated together to keep track of lots of pieces of information for one thing. And if you have lots of those things, you would need them to put all of that into a list that's really hard to keep track of or even wrap your mind around like you have a list inside a list with lots of other variables Ooh, disgusting so instead we use this this is nice and clean and easy to think about you have an object an apple and it has all these things in it yeah it makes sense that's how we think about the real world right could be much easier to work that with than uh, groups of lists and it's easier to pass to various program components so if i needed to take my list of stuff and give it to some other thing, some other maybe function, or maybe a, a different program that's using it, it'd be really, really difficult if I had to send it 50 pieces of information, and really easy if I just send it this one object. How do I make one? Well, here's the actual kind of syntax for creating an object. So you have to name it, give it a name, and in JavaScript, since everything is a variable, you just call it var. So var apple would be the name of my uh, object here, would be apple. And we know it's an object because we say equals, and these curly braces signify that it is an object. We have to have an opening one and a closing one with a semicolon at the end. Now you have two options. You can either define your object as you declare it, or you can modify it as you go. And you can certainly declare it like this and then use these here to change its properties or add new ones. That's perfectly allowed. So inside the curly braces, if we wanted to give it some properties, so we could say property, let's say type, and then uh, you do a colon followed by what definition you want to give that type. And that could be a string or it could be a number, any kind of information you'd like to associate with your apple. So it could do type, color, and as many as you want. We keep going for hundreds of lines here. Or you could do it this way, where you declare your object, var apple uh, equal. There we go. Equals, really important. We don't forget that equal sign there. The curly braces, the curly braces make it an object. And then after that, you can uh, go ahead and add your types later. So you could say apple dot, or properties, apple dot type apple.color, apple.size, dot width, whatever you want afterwards. So those are your two options for how you want to give your objects information to hold. Now let's go ahead and talk about your assignment. So we're going back to code.org. I know you guys know and love that format. So hopefully this won't be too much of a shock. Uh, and we're going to be looking at the post AP section. So let me go ahead and show you that. If you go into code.org, into your class section, whatever your class section is, and scroll all the way to the bottom to post AP data tools and go to that unit, you find yourself in a similar screen to this. Now there are two chapters here. Chapter one, manipulating and visualizing data. We're going to skip that one. We don't have enough time to cover it. And frankly, it's a little bit boring. So. You can go ahead and kind of minimize that whole chapter. We're going to be focusing on chapter two here. So we're going to be looking at lesson eight this week, creating JavaScript objects. And then we're going to be dealing with permanent storage a little bit for the next couple of weeks. So that's where we're going. So you're going to be working through this lesson. You need to get all the way through all these 16 bubbles. Many of these bubbles are just write one line of code and hit OK. So it shouldn't take you super long. Uh, by the end of this, you should be able to use objects in your code to make a, a little contact uh, page, which is pretty fun. And hopefully you can see the power of objects and how easy it could be to use them to create a more interesting program design than you've been able to so far. So that's all I got. I hope to see you guys at our weekly check-ins. They're not mandatory. But I do like to see your face, and we can talk about all of these concepts together, which could be helpful. That's all I have. Have a good one.